I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this series, I've generally tried to avoid using transition metals for our different mechanisms. And largely, this is because I'm afraid that the general audience hasn't experienced the type of reactions necessary to understand the mechanisms for organometallic chemistry or catalysis, for example. However, I read all the comments and I've seen the requests down below, so this is my first introduction using a transition metal complex to perform some reaction. And in fact, the very first step in this mechanism is just the coordination of the pi system in this alkyne to this gold complex. And for those of you unfamiliar with organometallic or transition metal chemistry, these metal complexes can bind to different pi systems through what's known as a dative bond. And this is not to be confused with your traditional covalent type bonding, but instead this is a coordinative bond where there's not actually a sharing of electrons between two atoms equally, like in covalent bonds that you're used to seeing in organic chemistry. And what's interesting about this interaction is that it leads to something called pi backbonding, which is actually going to weaken this carbon-carbon triple bond. If you're interested in learning more about pi backbonding, I have a video here that you can check out. So we can draw the product of this reaction being everything mostly still the same, where the benzene is here. I'm going to place our aldehyde in this position. We still have our alkyne, and coordinated to the alkyne is going to be that gold complex. And remember, this has weakened this carbon-carbon bond, and in fact, it's going to make it susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So the next step in this reaction is actually going to be the lone pairs on this aldehyde oxygen will come down and attack this carbon position. And in doing so, this is going to shift this gold complex from having a hapticity of two, meaning that it's equally sharing its bond between the two carbons of the alkyne, to just being on one of them. So it'll be kind of like a shift to this position. So the product of this transformation is going to contain that bicyclic product where we're going to have a series of charged pieces of this molecule because now this oxygen is going to have three bonds to it making it positively charged and this is actually going to be a six-membered ring where our gold is now at this position and we have maintained our balance of charges because now the gold complex is going to be negatively charged. Remember we had two pi bonds here and now we have only the one remaining because those pi electrons were used to make a bond between gold and carbon. And importantly, this R group is now coming off of this carbon. So if you notice in our product from our reactants, we're shifting the location of the R group. Whereas here, this is an aldehyde. On this side, on the product, we have a ketone. So that R group is shifting in this process. And this is one of the key steps that drives that rearrangement. And if you notice, we have a pi bond here and a pi bond here. And if we introduce our alkyne at this position, notice then we have the makings of what looks like could happen to be a four plus two cycloaddition, or what you may have previously heard of as a Diels-Alder reaction. So these pi electrons will come to this carbon, these pi electrons will come to this carbon, and that's gonna make another fused ring system as a product of this four plus two cycloaddition. So the product of this transformation is gonna contain this benzene, but now we have also created a fused cyclic ring system. So we will draw in this sort of conformation to indicate that fused ring. So we still have this pi bond between the carbon and oxygen at this position, meaning that this is positively charged. There were originally two pi bonds in this alkyne, so there's still one remaining here. The gold is still attached to this carbon at this position, and it is still negatively charged, so we can indicate that. The R group will be coming off of this carbon. Here we have our hydrogen, and here we have the phenyl group, which came from this alkyne. And then from here, we can have a rearrangement of these pi electrons, which will come and open up this fused ring bridged head position to give us our neutral oxygen, and this is actually how we're forming this ketone in our final product. Now what you may be thinking is that that should build up a positive charge at this carbon, and you're absolutely right. However, if you consider the stability of resonance structures, then you'll see how that may be possible in this mechanism. Because now you end up with a product where the pi electrons can be delocalized to stabilize that positive charge. So our gold is still at this position which is still negatively charged, so we still have a balance of charges 
because remember what we're generating is a positive charge at this position here. But remember, since those pi electrons moved over, this means that we could actually have a resonance form where that positive charge is delocalized between many different positions because this phenyl group is here and also because these alkene pi electrons can move about freely between these positions because they're delocalized pi electrons. So then what remains to draw in is the fact that we have now created that ketone and we still have this hydrogen here. And then what can happen is now this gold complex can rearrange where these electrons can come back down to being forming an alkene at this position, which is gonna formalize the position of the other pi bond over here, which is another reason that this was a stabilized intermediate in this mechanism. And this is going to liberate the gold complex and regenerate our catalyst, because remember that it, by definition, a catalyst cannot be consumed in a reaction, so we're regenerating it so this gold complex can continue to go about in a catalytic cycle. And this was actually the last step in our product formation. So then to recap, the the original reaction was a complexation of this gold complex to the pi electrons in the pi bond. And this in turn makes the carbon to carbon triple bond susceptible to nucleophilic attack, which can happen via this oxygen. And this is going to make a new six membered ring at this position where our alkyne can come in and perform a four plus two cyclo addition to give us this fused ring system where we have the bridgehead of this carbonyl compound. And then these pi electrons can help liberate that fused ring bridgehead in order to give us our new ketone, which we form in the final product. And this resonance structure stabilizes the carbocation that is formed from moving over these pi electrons. And then finally, the electrons contained between the catalyst and the carbon bond can move over to help us generate our second pi bond and ensuring that the pi electrons are located in between these two carbons in our final product. And in case you are interested in seeing the experimental evidence for this, this comes from a Yamamoto paper, Yamamoto paper published in the Journal of American Chemical Society, or JAX for short, back in 2002. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.